Hey guys, welcome to the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Bello, and I just got back from a long day of showing a bunch of houses to some clients, uh, buyer clients. They, you know, they want to see all the options. They want to know what's out there. And so hopefully we narrowed it down. We found a few we like. Now we got to play the negotiation game, get something under contract. And then once we find a house, it's basically about a month and a half tops until we get closing done. My clients get a house, I get paid, everything's great. But it's a fine balance, and that's what I want to talk about today, is a fine balance of uh, the give and take of client expectations versus what you can actually give. So time is limited, right? And what I've heard people say, and specifically for real estate, is that when you're showing buyers houses, sometimes it's very hard to contain it. You're very much at their mercy. Let's go look at more houses. Let's do this. Can we add this other house to the list? And then maybe things change and they say, hey, I'm going to rent instead for another year or I decided to wait for now. Versus if you are to get listings, like you find sellers looking to sell their houses, you have leverage because your sign's in the front of the yard, you're getting marketing, people are calling you, other agents are showing your house and kind of doing your job helping you sell your listing. And of course, you just follow up with them and it's a lot more scalable. Right now, I've got... Let me just pull it up now. It's kind of cool to see how many houses I have listed right now. And they're not all the best, I'll be honest. I mean, some of them don't have the best photos and they've got tenants in them and it's a little more difficult to move them and find buyers for them because the people have to inherit tenants. But I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. I currently have 12 houses listed all at once and it's a little overwhelming, but at the same time, a lot of it is like, follow up with people who reach out in terms of asking questions about the different listings and whatnot. And while I'm sitting here recording this for you, other people can be looking up my information. They can be showing houses. Other realtors are taking their buyers to my vacant houses. The showing instructions are all automated. The instructions are on the listing and tell them what to do. And so it's a lot more scalable. I just go out and get more listings. I entertain offers. I present them to the seller and then we move forward. Versus right here, I literally just spent three hours um, showing great buyer clients. You know, they're great clients. I'm not complaining. I'm just showing you the difference between being the listing agent and having the leverage versus being the buyer's agent where I was just spending three hours driving across town and it was a little far away and it's just a lot more time intensive and, you know, hopefully we can make an offer and get a property for them. But at the end of the day, if we don't, we got to repeat the process and go look at more houses and, you know, kind of start from scratch. Um, so yeah, that's the fine line of pushing back between your client. Maybe they want to look at another house and you got to be like, Hey, you know, I really, I really don't have time to look at that other house. I've got to treat these other clients with, you know, the same respect. I've got to show them houses or this is taking away from my time with, you know, my other clients or my family or whatever. And so drawing that line can be a little difficult, but it's important to do the way that I like to push back on clients and kind of my script is, Hey, you know, I have an appointment at that time. Even if it's a gym, if it's a workout, if it's an appointment with the gym, I tell people I've got an appointment at this time. I'm not able to make it at that time. You know, can you please reschedule? And even this morning, like I stayed up a little late last night with my girlfriend. I was trying to watch a movie with her. I usually fall asleep at 10 or 11 at night, even on weekends now, especially with all the quarantine stuff lately. But I think I pushed through and I stayed up to like one or one fifteen. It was like super late for me. And so I wanted to make sure I got eight hours of sleep. And so I slept until like nine fifteen, right? And luckily I had do not disturb on my phone because people don't respect your time. You know, they think you're 24 seven available. They're going to call you no matter what. And I woke up and I saw that I had a missed call at 8.22 a.m. Of course, it went straight to voicemail and my voicemail tells them to leave me a text because I may be in, a, in an appointment with another client when really I was in an appointment with my pillow. Um, so yeah, I had a call at 8.22 a.m. That would have woken me up if my phone was not on Do Not Disturb. But they sent me a text. They had some questions about one of my listings. I didn't reply right away, right? I woke up and I did my morning routine. I meditated. I read. Um, I did all of that. I intermittent fasted all morning. And after that one hour morning routine, then I replied and I said, here you go. Here's the information. You know, they could have found that information online where the listing is, but sometimes people call the sign and people, 
people just like to call and do things impulsively, right? So you kind of have to build systems and build your processes in a way that forces people to go down the path you want them to go down. I don't answer my phone. It goes to do not disturb. My voicemail tells them to send me a text. They send me a text. They're playing by my rules. If I always answer the phone call, every time someone calls, I'm training others to do whatever they want and to just call me whenever because I don't value my time and I have no sense of time blocking or, or following a calendar. That's what I'm, that's the message I'm telling when I answer my phone anytime it rings on the first ring. So yeah, I'm kind of all over the place right now. I haven't really eaten all day. I had a one Smoothie King smoothie and breakfast at noon. It's already 6, 12 PM here when I'm recording this for you. So I'm feeling a little bit low energy. I was wanting to go to the gym, but it's closed. It closed early, I guess, with their new coronavirus um, hours. Girlfriend and I need to go to HEB, get some groceries. I am going to restock on some meal prepped plates because literally when I have no food in the fridge and I don't feel like cooking, that's when you start to eat junk food, right? So you want to be prepared. I'm still very much working on this whole process of like outsourcing and delegating as much possible. I don't want to have to cook. I don't want to have to clean. I don't even have to, I don't even want to have to do my laundry. I don't want to have to book my haircuts or my massages. I did take some time to act on my last episode. I posted a few things on Upwork and um, I messaged my other virtual assistant who does my podcast editing and asked him if he had any recommendation on a personal assistant who can commit a few hours a week. So now I just need to get a couple of Calendly links sent out so they can book a video call. I want to do a quick video call to interview them, make sure they're a good fit. And basically, once I find someone who's a good fit and who I feel like I can gel with, that we can communicate a couple hours every week, it'll be off to the races and I'll be continuing to focus on my key things, which showing houses to buyers, that's important. I want to have FaceTime. I want to be helping buyers out, but I want to lean closer to the sellers as well because that gives me the leverage. That gives me the ability to put a sign in a yard, go on vacation for two weeks entertain offers, accept things, negotiate over text and email on my downtime versus like I have a couple buyers looking for houses and I'm going to be going to Colorado for two weeks in August. And I'm a little nervous because I want to make sure let's look at houses before I go to Colorado so we can make an offer and get it accepted. And that buys me like a month for the lender and all of that to come through um, to go on that vacation real quick, come back and then tend to those clients. Whereas if I had listings, it's like, cool, I get the signs up there. I enjoy my vacation. I check my voicemail, my texts and my emails one time per evening and I can respond, send an offer to my client that we received, get it accepted, get it signed online. So it's way more scalable. And then I suppose the next level of my business is when I grow to that certain level and I've got the personal assistant and I've got the VA helping me with my podcasts. I could find another agent and have like a buying agent and a listing agent. And I could be like the broker who runs the team. And whenever I have a buyer who wants to look at houses, my buying agent handles that and shows those houses and gets it under contract and the volume goes under my name. And then the listing agent could be the one who hosts the open houses and goes and puts the signs up and does all that stuff. And I can just be the person in the background who's giving the initial FaceTime to the client and making sure they have a great experience handing them off to the person on my team who will complete the service or the work, provide me the updates. I can check in with the client as needed. Um, and yeah, that's basically how I'm planning to grow my empire. I want a business where I don't have to be there all the time. You know, I want a business where it's making money. It's somewhat predictable right now. It's still the roller coaster of commissions, deals closing, getting paid, and then nothing. Got to fill the pipeline. Got to go lead generate. It's definitely ups and downs. The checks can be great, but at the same time, the fees you got to pay to your broker and stuff, that adds up, right? So no matter what business you're in, and I know I keep talking a lot about real estate lately because I'm in real estate. This is the language that I can speak, but I also don't want to just talk about real estate only because I know that will get kind of boring for some of y'all. But yeah, so no matter what business that you're in, I want to make sure that you build it in a way that it doesn't need you. If you can check out and you can go on a vacation for one month, and your business survives, great. You have a business that is built to sell. 
You want to essentially build a business that's like a franchise model, like McDonald's, how they've got franchises. They, they can plug in the 16 year old kid on the fry machine and he knows how long to put the fries in, uh, what the process is to drain the oil or whatever. I don't know how, how to make French fries. I've never done it. You want to be able to build your system in a way, have checklists, have processes and make it where if you need to step away for some reason, someone else can get plugged in there and just carry on from where you left off. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you are having a great week, doing well. I'm going to be sure to get more interviews set up here very, very soon. I've been so tied up in the freaking grind of the real estate stuff and showing clients houses and hosting open houses and all of that, that this is why I am sharing the struggles that I'm having because I'm having the growing pains of like, damn, I need to be in two places at once and I can't be because it's just me. And that's why I need to hire help so that I can scale up and I can delegate things and outsource. And that's why I'm ordering more completed, completely ready to go meals because I don't want to spend time cooking and cleaning because I'm not a chef. I am a real estate professional. I'm a podcaster. Those are the two things that I want to spend the most time doing in terms of working and in terms of my business. Um, so think about what are you? What is your title? What do you want, want to be? And how much time are you committing to doing things other than that which you want to do? If it makes sense, can you outsource that stuff? Can you pay someone else to do it? Can you maybe combine things? Or are you doing something that you really don't even have to do? Like delegate it, outsource it, get rid of it, stop doing it. So yeah, ask yourself those questions. And with that being said, have a great week. Let me know what you guys are up to, how everything's going, anything that you want to hear next. And I look forward to catching you on the next episode of the Entrepreneur Motivation Podcast. Thanks so much. Talk soon. Bye.